Can you read to me the nameplate? Judge Ebony K. Williams. So the only thing that matters in this particular courtroom is how I see it. I am from North Carolina by way of Louisiana with some West Coast cool and a New York edge. Do we have a problem, ma'am? No, I don't, Your Honor. Equal justice is all about the most important values of our country, freedom, integrity, and those are the things that I'm striving for. Ma'am, you run your household. This man gets to run his. I decided to become an attorney and pursue the law. I wanted to be a voice for the voiceless. This court can not hold this woman accountable. People from all sectors of life, black, white, purple, gay, straight, queer, and that's what Equal Justice with Judge Ebony K. Williams is all about. Nathan Abernathy claims he was seriously injured when a reckless ATV driver hit him during an illegal race. Douglas Thompson says the plaintiff stepped into the danger zone for a photo, so it's his own fault. Okay, gentlemen, Mr. Nathan Abernathy, here as my plaintiff, I see Douglas Thompson as the defendant. Mr. Abernathy, you say you are suing this man for $5,400. Tell me why you're in court today, sir. So, Your Honor, like you said, my name is Nathan Abernathy. I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. And, you know, me and my boy Carter, we went out one night, mm -hmm. and then we went to a park, and then in the park there was a big crowd outside. From the back of the crowd, we make our way to the front of the crowd. Mm -hmm. And then we notice there's like an ATV racetrack going on, so they're like doing donuts or something. Mm -hmm. So me and him talk for about five minutes, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, next thing I know, I get hit by a car, an ATV, mm -hmm. and Your Honor, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda hurt, I get knocked off of my feet. Mm -hmm. So I kinda, he helps me make my way back up. You get hit by an ATV, and just your body? You are not riding anything? You're no. not in a car vehicle? You just pedestrian hit? Yes, exactly. Okay, and then your homeboy does what? You know, eventually he makes his way over to me to mm -hmm. see what's going on. And I'm not going to lie, Your Honor, I was a little mad. I mean, I probably said some things I wasn't supposed to say. Okay. But, mm -hmm. you know, it, I mean, sure. it is what okay. it is. So what, what kind of stuff did you say, Mr. Abernathy? Well, you know, I kind of made no, fun of No, I don't know. What, what, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> what, what did you say? Okay, so, you know, I kind of made fun of the way he looks. You know, I look better than him, so I probably, that probably came out a little bit. So, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me understand. You, with your relative, no disrespect, slight frame, okay, are hit physically by ATV. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you think to do is talking about how you look better than this man. I, was, I just, I just want to understand. Okay, go ahead. Go I, ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, it's, 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 everybody's I got, different. I got a little okay. bit of a temper, so. Okay. Anyways, we exchange information, and then my friend drives me home, mm -hmm. and then, and but check this, Your Honor. For three months afterwards, oh, I'm checking. Uh, mm -hmm. I had to go to physical therapy. Right. For three months. Three months. Three times out the week. And so, I'm sure you were in severe pain. Yeah, ex extreme pain. Okay, so this is a lot of money you want. Five thousand four hundred. What is that for? Medical expenses? Yes, for physical okay. therapy. Okay. Go ahead. And, uh, I assume you have receipts or something to show. I do. I do. I do. I have my um, yeah. medical bill right here. Oh, give give, give okay. my uh, bailiff everything you got, sir, so I can yes, see sir. that. Thank you. <clears throat> and y'all, I just want to say one more thing. I call this gentleman right here, mm -hmm. and then he's telling me what he's not going to do and how he's not going to pay. And then again. And what did you say? What, what did you say on the call? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I said some stuff I wasn't supposed I to say. I, I figured. Okay. Let me look at this for a second. <laughs> okay. 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 We're gonna, yeah. Exactly. Okay. So this is your. Therapy invoice. I do see three different months, June, July, and August. You had 12 sessions each. So this is an intense therapy regime, uh, all amounting in $5,400, and you have paid it in full. Yes. So you're looking to seek reimbursement from this gentleman. Absolutely. Who you say is the, the reason that you were in therapy to begin with. He's the exact reason why I was okay. in therapy. Okay, so that's a lot. Um, Mr. Thompson, what say you? Well, you know, so we do this every weekend at this park in Buffalo, and it usually goes off without a hitch. These are you and fellow ATV drivers? Yes. Okay, go ahead. So, you know, I'm going through my turn, uh, my drift turn, and now everyone knows to stay back away from the circle. It's kind of obvious. Wherever you see mm -hmm. the tracks from the tires, mm -hmm. you don't want to step on to that because mm -hmm. that means you're in the line of fire. Mm. So as soon as we go through our drift turns, if you're behind that drift turn, you're now in our blind spot. Mm. So as I'm going through my drift turn, I must have hit him. Mm -hmm. Now this- You're saying he was in your blind spot. He was in my blind spot. Okay. So I notice after I have gone through that turn, mm -hmm. I see that there's a commotion in the back. And I'm sure you felt something. Well, when you're doing this, it's bumpy on these roads. Oh, so, so it's bumpy it, you anyway. just think that you're hitting so the bumps. So he was just another bump. Yes. <laughs> now that's what he said. Okay. Yeah. I didn't I'm, ask him to hit my ATV. Like okay. Okay. Sorry. Come on, Mr. Abernathy. So we would have had enough of your shenanigans. I see that there's okay. a commotion back there. I parked the ATV. Okay. I go check it out. Right. 
first thing he does, he starts getting in my face, starts yelling, mm -hmm. saying threats, threatening that he's going to call the police. Hmm. Right? So I give him my information, my insurance, my ID okay, information. Okay, so you were prepared to try to make him whole. Yeah, you, yeah, you yeah do I was just trying to make sure he's all right. Hidden. Okay. Exactly. Now, exactly. tell the court, uh, Mr. Thompson, do you have any evidence to show, because I'm trying to visualize what this looks like. Can you show yeah, the court so, what it looks um, like? If you, there's a video that we submitted uh, You gave that evidence. already to my bailiff. Okay, let's see this video yeah. so I can get a sense as to what exactly we're talking about here. Coming up on Equal Justice. How am I supposed to know where I'm supposed to stand? Did at? you know you were at an ATV race? I didn't point? know until I made my way to the front of the crowd. What did you think the crowd was? I don't know. Maybe they were singing happy birthday. I don't know what they were doing. And later. She said she could not guarantee that she could get exactly what I wanted. So she did communicate that to you? She did, but she also agreed to take this position. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is Equal Justice. Equal Justice is back with the case of Nathan Abernathy, who blames Douglas Thompson for an ATV crash that left him injured. I want us to all see this, okay. So this is the donut you're speaking about? Yes, and as you can see, okay. as we're going through, you see how everyone's kind of stand back behind that line, like an imaginary line? That's where you would see tire. The, the tire marks, okay, right? So the white so line you know. is indicative of the tire Exactly. Okay. So it, it would have to mean that he was literally away from the crowd Mm -hmm. And now some people, they try to get like the action shot. Yeah, they want to get close. Yeah, they want to get close. Those right? are like the people that are standing on the very exactly. edge of the Grand know, Canyon. Uh, you know the ones? Okay, exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so he tried to get, the, he must have been trying to get the action shot. That's the only reason why he would be that close. Uh -huh. And if well, you're going to be that close, okay, okay, Honor, well, okay. if, if I may, just real quick. Yeah. First of all, there was no safety cones. Mm -hmm. There were no ropes. Mm -hmm. So what, this is my first time at an ATV race. Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to know where I'm supposed to stand Did at. you know you were at an ATV race? I didn't point? know until I made my way to the front of the crowd. What did you think the crowd was? I don't, maybe they were singing happy birthday. I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> but all I did was make my way to the front of the crowd. I noticed that they're doing the ATV donut races or whatever they do, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to have fun. And maybe I did have my phone in my hand, okay? Uh, Mr. Carter Banks, mm -hmm. let's, let's have your witness approach. Yes, sir. Uh, sworn in, Elijah? Yes, sir. Okay, let's see if you can bring some clarity. So this is your friend, right, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and yes, you were with him? Yes, yes, I okay. was Okay, and do you witness your friend, Mr. Abernathy, pull out his phone to video? Well, I, I, as we get to the front, I, I was trailing behind Mr. Nathan, mm -hmm. and as always, I'm picking up after his mess, so I'm, I'm getting mm -hmm. through the crowd, and I start to see that he's, like, getting to the front, and he's like, yo, like, they're doing, like, ATV races, they're doing donuts and stuff, and I'm like, yo, that's cool, maybe you could take a picture for us, and we could, you know, get this before we, we head oh, out so, of here. So you put the battery in his bag. So I did ask him uh -huh. to take the picture, but I... I didn't, there, like he said, there was no cones, there was, there was no ropes, no nothing. So we didn't know how close was too close. But you were trying to get as close as possible. Let's be honest with the court. We, we both we, admit that. Yes, yes. You're trying to get the money shot. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. You can have a seat. I'll get with you if I need you more. Uh, let's ask this young lady to approach. Uh, Ms. Fernandez, what can you yes. testify to? So I was um, in the crowd with my friends. I attend these events fairly often. How do you know this man? We're acquainted. Okay, so you just friends in this community. Yes. Okay, so what did you see? So, I've, uh, like I said, I was in the crowd with my friends. Everybody's having a good time, but I did see some commotion in the crowd, So, and I looked over. I just so happened to see the plaintiff making his way through the crowd, goofing around, talking to girls, like, That's having nothing to do with time. the case. Nothing to do with the case. What'd you say? That's nothing to do with the case. Okay. Sir. Sorry. So what he's claiming doesn't really add up to what I saw because, like I said, I did see his phone out as he was heading toward. People were telling him to scoot back. Mm -hmm. Oh, people wasn't. were telling him to scoot yes. back. Okay, so put a pin in that. Do you believe that the defendant here, Mr. Thompson, did not see the plaintiff because of the blind spot issue? I do believe so, yes. You believe that's yes, correct? Yes, I believe he stepped in, um, the plaintiff stepped in the ring of fire mm. to get that money shot and... And got, got, got. Yeah. got, got. Got what was coming. You got, got. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Fernandez. You You're can have welcome. a seat. The court thanks you. Uh, okay. I have a final question before I make a ruling here, and it's for you, Mr. Thompson. So this is a customary thing, right, that you and this ATV community do on a weekly basis. Yes. Do y'all have a permit? You know... That's it's... a no. Okay. You don't have a permit. There's a reason that we have fluorescent markers, sir. If you're riding yes. a bike... 
right? A, a, you know, anytime there's a reflector, those things happen for a reason. They are for what, sir? Protection. That's right. Safety and protection of yes. those who may not otherwise be afforded the knowledge and the awareness as to what's going on around them. Uh, do you have any final last words, Mr. Abernathy? Your Honor, I just want my money. That's pretty much it. Um, I don't want to see this man anymore. He's mm -hmm. pretty much showed me his true character, and it's okay, Your Honor. I just, I just need my money. That's all I need. Oh, well, I'm so glad you said it was okay, <laughs> because that is extremely important to this court. Not, this is not me scolding you, young man. This is for your safety. Because as you see, you got really hurt here, and it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Also, Mr. Thompson, I can appreciate that people need to blow off steam. And, you know, I come from an era uh, where, you know, people used to low ride and do different things um, customarily. But the thing about this day and age is, you know, there's a lot more concentration of population and there's a lot more at risk when it comes to safety. So if you and your friends are going to do this type of thing, I suggest, number one, you reach out to your municipal authorities and maybe, oh, I don't know, get a permit for such race, you know, drag racing and things like this. That, that stuff should be permitted. Also, that type of thing should have safety, cones, flags, things that are clear indicators as to this is the space in which we are going to be driving. This is the space in which you will be of high risk. And this is the clear indication. And I'm not talking about a tire tread, sir. I'm talking about a flagrant marker that says this is the danger zone. So that way, no one has to use common sense, because as we see, it might not be so common. And so therefore, people don't get hurt. That's really my concern. So I'm going to hold you both jointly liable for your respective contributions to what was a bad accident, which could have been a worse accident. So I'm going to split your request to the court. You asked the court for 5400 You are going to get exactly half of that. I'm ruling for the plaintiff. That's my ruling. All rise. Judge Ebony has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $2,700. I just want to say that the truth always comes to light, and it definitely came tonight. Hey, man, at least I ain't got to pay the whole $5,400. Okay, you've had your day in court. Please follow me. Coming up on Equal Justice. What I specified was that I must have animatronics. What Miss Richards provided looks like a group of skeletons defecated on my front yard. This is Equal Justice. Beverly Richards claims she is still owed for the elaborate Halloween display she created for a new client. Sarah Darby says she wanted scary animatronics for her lawn, but instead it looked ordinary and boring. Good day, ladies. I see I have Miss Beverly Richards here as my plaintiff, Sarah Darby as the defendant. Miss Richards, you are suing Miss Darby for $2,000. Why are we in court today? We're in court today because she hasn't paid the remaining $2,000 that she owes me mm. for the Halloween decorations that I installed in her front yard. She was a referral. Okay. And she loved my work via, you know, social media and mm -hmm. all the photos that my clients had shown her. Mm -hmm. um, however, it was very late in the time frame. I was very hesitant to do it mm. because it was already October 6th. Okay. She wanted animatronics, she wanted ghosts and groups of witches mm. and moving spiders. Most of these things are out of stock. Right, especially this time of year. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. and I wouldn't have taken the job if she didn't say, I trust your judgment mm -hmm. and, you know, go ahead. So she gave you some flexibility. She gave me a lot of flexibility. Okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. Okay. Ma'am, do you have a contract that exists between the two of you for these services? We have emails back and forth okay. where she made a payment. Go ahead and offer that up to my bailiff there. Thank you. I also have pictures in there from my website so okay, you can see you, my work. Let's see the video. So this video, I had to create a ground on top of the ground just to make all of this happen so I didn't ruin her grass. Right. And they have to be made heavy enough mm -hmm. so that they don't blow away. So that was like a cemetery kind of situation yes. you were going for? Yes, yeah. she okay. said she wanted fun yet spooky. Okay. Coming up on Equal Justice. So your standards, my neighbor's standards, tread carefully. they're not the same C tread carefully as my standards. This is Equal Justice. 
Equal Justice is back with the case of Beverly Richards, who brought Sarah Darby to court over an unpaid Halloween lawn display. All right, well, what do you say about all of this, Miss Darby? Was this not to your liking, or why haven't you paid this woman her money? What I specified was that I want fun, yet spooky, but I must have animatronics. Moving spiders, moving ghosts, a group of witches. What Miss Richards provided looks like a group of skeletons defecated on my front yard. I was unable to get the exact items that she requested. Did you specify which animatronics you could offer her? I, I told her I, after we had a conversation mm -hmm. on the phone and I could not get the animatronics that she needed. Mm. And she, I said, but I will make your decorations beautiful. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, like I said, I trust your judgment. Okay, Miss Darby, did she say, I can't guarantee you all of these specific animatronics? So she said she could not guarantee that she could get exactly what I wanted mm -hmm. within the suggested time frame. Right, so she did communicate that to you. She did, but she also agreed to take this position. Mm -hmm. The animatronics that she selected yeah. were not within the realm of what we discussed. Not even close. Okay. Let me ask you this, Miss Darby. What was the reaction from your neighbors and trick-or-treaters? Did you get any at all compliments or feedback around the decor? I would say that those who saw it had a generally positive impression. Because I, I thought I was crazy. Because I'm looking at it, I'm seeing the video, and it looked pretty cool to me. Cool. That looks like more effort than I would see for most houses on Halloween. So, your standards, my neighbor's standards, my children's standards, tread carefully. they're not the same Ca tread carefully, as Ms. my Darby. standards. Tread and very that's carefully. all that I can say. Judge Ebony's verdict when equal justice returns. This is Equal Justice. What are you saying about my standards? I'm saying that they're not as high as my standards are for Halloween decor. Well, I believe I'm ready to rule on this case. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you do the right thing. Just say the word. Say the word. I mean, never in my life. Yeah. Say the word. <sighs> you know, I was just going to rule against you, mm -hmm. but now I have to do things differently. Okay. Ms. Richards, the court finds that you made every good faith professional effort to appease this woman who is clearly out of her mind. Uh, the court rules not only for your full $2,000 to be returned to you, I'm actually going to rule in favor of an extra $2,000. Thank you. For your pain and suffering and your troubles. And next time, Ms. Darby, it's you who needs to do the right thing. That is my ruling. Thank you. You're right. All rise. Judge Ebony has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $4,000. Any final thoughts for each other? I'm okay. sorry the decision has come to this. Okay. I'm just glad justice is served. You've had your day in court. Please grab your belongings. Follow me. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.